Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. Today we are exploring the heartbreaking case of Danielle Boone, a young mother whose life was brutally cut short by her own boyfriend. This case was featured on season five, episode one of the Netflix series, I Am A Killer. Join me as we examine the events leading up to her murder and the aftermath that left the community reeling. Please like and subscribe to our channel as we bring you real life stories every week. Jamal Dantes Hatcher, born in 1986 in Cleveland, Ohio. He grew up in a neighborhood plagued by violence, leading him to become involved with drugs and alcohol. However, his life took a positive turn when he met Danielle, who helped him turn away from his troubled past. Despite this, he was responsible for shooting and killing Danielle in their Maple Heights apartment, leaving behind their three-week-old daughter, Cheyenne. Although Jamal initially said he didn't kill Danielle, he later claimed it was an accident. Almost three years after the murder, Jamal pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Jamal has been campaigning for early release by claiming that he is rehabilitated. He asked Danielle's family for forgiveness and married a minister while in prison. His early release was denied. His parole eligibility date is set for late 2025. The murder of Danielle Boone serves as a reminder of the devastating consequences of domestic violence and the importance of addressing toxic relationships. We honor her memory by sharing her story and hope that we have a future where such tragedies are fewer and farther between. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for commentary by DJ. Hey everyone, DJ here, and I'm very, very upset tonight. I just finished watching the first episode of I Am A Killer, which is a true crime Netflix series that is very popular. The first episode of season five is about Danielle Boone's murder. And Danielle was murdered by her boyfriend, Jamel Hatcher, in 2005. Jamel was a thug from Ohio, and he grew up in a rough neighborhood. Danielle grew up in a better neighborhood with a better family structure. Danielle and Jamel met, and they decided they wanted to be together. Danielle inspired Jamel to do better with his life. So he started to take classes so that he can get a job and be a productive person. Danielle got pregnant and she and Jamel welcomed a baby girl, Cheyenne, in 2005. Three weeks after the baby was born, Jamel had some friends over at their apartment. And when I say friends, we're talking about thugs and gangbangers. So they were drinking and taking drugs. Just imagine this guy has a beautiful, supportive girlfriend and he has a three week old baby but he decides to invite low lives to his house to take drugs and drink alcohol. After his friends left, Jamel realized that he's missing a gun. So in the apartment with his baby and his girlfriend, he has guns. So he realized one of his guns were missing. He's talking to Danielle and telling her how his guns are missing. So she's trying to calm him down because he's angry and he's arguing with her and the neighbors said they heard them arguing and he pulls out a shotgun and continues to argue with Danielle. And then he shoots Danielle in the head with a shotgun and she dies instantly. So he leaves his apartment, he goes over to another girl's apartment and he has sex with her so he can create an alibi for himself. All the while, he left his three week old baby on the bed by herself next to her mother who's dead on the ground. Danielle's grandmother didn't hear from her all day. So she asked Danielle's mother to go check on her. So Danielle's mother went over there with her 11 year old brother to see how Danielle is doing. And they found Danielle dead with a gunshot wound to her head on the ground and they found the baby crying on the bed. So the baby's been on the bed for 18 hours crying without food. Now a baby needs to be fed every about two hours. So this baby was extremely hungry and had been crying all day. The police were called and the investigation started. They brought Jamel in and asked him if he was involved with the murder. He said no. He said he was at Latanya's house and he said they had sex to prove his alibi. So the police bring in Latanya. She initially said yes. He came in at 1 p.m and they did have sex. When police questioned her further, she told the truth and said no, he came in at 4 a.m. That meant he had no alibi. Two years after the murder, he finally decided to plead guilty to involuntary manslaughter, claiming that it was an accidental shooting. The police didn't believe that, but the prosecutor accepted that it was involuntary manslaughter and he got 20 years. So nine years into his 20 year sentence, he decides that he wants to be released early and he has been doing every program in the prison to see if he can get sympathy to get out early. And he spoke to the grandparents of the deceased, Danielle, in order to get them on his side so he could have favorable opinions to get released early. He reached out to a female minister who he knew since he was 16. Her name is Janae Bates. And she said she took on his case because she's known him a long time 
And this is her statement. She said that Jamel should not have gotten 20 years for what was an accident. She also said that he has a high level of emotional intelligence and cares about how people are feeling. And I'm wondering, how could someone who made the amount of mistakes that Jamel made have a high level of emotional intelligence? And how could he care about how people are feeling when he left his three-week-old baby on a bed for 18 hours and shoot his girlfriend in the head? Does that sound like someone who cares about how people are feeling? I don't think so. Now, when I'm first watching this show, I'm watching the episode, and, and the pastor was speaking. I said to myself, how much you want to bet that this pastor is probably attracted to this dude? And about five minutes later into the episode, it said that she and Jamel are now in a relationship and they're engaged to be married. And in 2021, they got married. So she's a pastor. She's been asking God and praying to God for years for a man. And she finally found a man who check all the boxes. And I'm saying this man is a convicted murderer. This is the kind of person you're praying to God for? Of all the decent men out here in the, in the world, you praying for a man who's a convicted murderer who shot his girlfriend in the head and killed her? Who left his baby for dead? That's the kind of man that you want? Let me tell you something. If you're a woman, don't date any guy that's in prison. Do not date someone in prison. People that are in prison are manipulative, okay? They want to manipulate you to send money to them, to marry them, to help them get out of jail. That's what happens with people in prison. You can never get to know someone truly while that person is incarcerated. Personally, if I was a woman, I wouldn't date anyone whether they were in prison or out of prison if they have a criminal record. When I say criminal record, I'm talking about for, for battery, for murder, for rape, for carrying an illegal weapon. People like that, I would not be in a relationship with at all. But specifically, I would definitely not be trying to get into a relationship with someone who's actively in prison. That's just running past the red flag and going right into it. This minister, Janae Bates, is advocating for, for Jamel to get early release. So he has her and then he has Danielle's grandmother and grandfather and he has Danielle's mother on his side. And the only person that he doesn't have on his side is Danielle's aunt. Because Danielle's aunt said that she spoke to her niece around the time she was murdered and her niece told her she was being abused. She's been physically abused. She has been verbally and emotionally abused by Jamal. He was not a good man. And if you look, there was, there's a picture. Please, I implore you to go and look at this episode on Netflix. I am a killer. It's called Redemption Season 5, Episode 1. Please go and watch it because I think it's a, a really good episode to watch. So Jamal, while trying to get early release, said he completed a bunch of prison reform programs. And he said the shooting of his girlfriend was an accident. I do not believe it was an accident. The detective don't believe it was an accident. We believe that he got into an argument with Danielle, it got heated, and he pulls out the gun and he shoots her. Because that's what thugs do. That's what they do. They don't care about human life. They don't care about their girlfriends. All they care about is gang banging and making money and, and doing criminal activities. Once he kill her, he now has to cover up so he can try to get off. But that definitely didn't work. So now, in this episode, you'll hear him saying a lot that he was high on PCP and he's blaming PCP. Let me tell you something about people who blame drugs for the bad things that they do. Drugs don't fall from the sky into your mouth. They don't fall from the sky and inject you. That doesn't happen. You have to willfully take a pill or inject drugs into your system in order for you to get high. It doesn't just happen. So if you willfully go and take drugs, you can then go and blame the drugs for your actions. Because we all know what drugs do to people. Drugs, you can get addicted to drugs and, and you can do all sorts of criminal activities. So people who blame drugs, they don't get no sympathy from me. And he's saying that it was an accident. The gun just went off. The guns don't just go off. You don't have a gun up in the closet, sitting watching TV, and then you just hear the gun go off. You know why? Because guns don't go off by themselves. You got to pull the trigger. And then if you have a gun, right? Why would you be pointing it at someone? Everyone knows if you have a gun, the only time you point it to someone is when you want to shoot them. Nobody points a gun to someone. There's a lot of willful things that Jamel did. And he's trying to excuse it all away by saying he was high on PCP. That doesn't cut it. That doesn't work. My other point is that when someone is convicted for a crime, you need to do your time. If you get 20 years, then do your 20 years. If you want to do prison programs and, and reform yourself and all this stuff, 
that's all well and fine. But do your 20 years and now you come out, you feel like you're reformed and you can live a better life and you can be a better human and you can be a better citizen to contribute to society. But please, we don't need people getting out of prison early. We don't need murderers and rapists coming out early. Some of the laws in the US and some of these states, it just angers me. If somebody get 20 years, they should be doing 20 years. I don't want to hear parole and early release and all this sort of stuff. Do you know how many prisoners have come out of jail and reoffended? They say they were reformed and all they believe in God and all this sort of nonsense. And then they went back and did the same thing again. If you get 20 years, do your 20 years, come out, change yourself and build your life up. This guy's trying to manipulate the justice system. He's manipulated Danielle's family to support him for early release. He's manipulated the female minister and he's trying to manipulate all of us. But I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Another point is this. Jamel is claiming that he grew up poor. And that is a contributing factor for how things went down. Let me tell you something. I grew up poor. There are millions of other people who grew up poor. When I grew up, I didn't have a gold spoon in my mouth. I, I didn't have everything given to me. My mother struggled to bring me up, working hard every day to bring me up, to put food on the table. And sometimes we didn't have food on the table. It was hard. It was tough. And when I became a man, there was no trust fund for me. My mother didn't have a million dollars to give me to go buy a house or, or she didn't have money to help me pay for college. I had to struggle to try to pay for college myself. And I couldn't. It was tough. It was difficult. It was hard. I had a hard life. A lot of poor people have had tough upbringing. That doesn't mean we should be going around killing people. That doesn't mean we should be going around selling drugs and gang banging. Listen, if you were born in Iraq or Afghanistan, you don't have a choice but to be in one of these terrorist groups. You don't have a choice. But in America, you have a choice. In America, one of the greatest countries in the world, you have a choice. You don't have to gangbang, being on the block, selling drugs. You don't have to do that. You can get a job in CVS. You can get a job at McDonald's. You can get a job just about anyway. Now the pay might not be high, but if you save your money, you can bill yourself out of it. There are millions of people who grew up with humble beginnings and turn out to make something of themselves. Millions of people. Just because you grew up in a tough neighborhood, that doesn't mean you should turn out a gangbanger. It doesn't give you the green light to go around killing people. So I don't want to hear no excuse about how people grew up because we all had it hard. And some of us still have it hard, but we're not going out there committing crime and looking for excuses for the stuff that we did. The best thing that Jamel could do, accept your fate. Spend your 20 years in prison and you get out, and you'll be a better man. And that's it. I'm so upset about this case because Danielle's life is gone. She's dead. And this fool, Jamel, is now using Danielle's name to get out of prison. The same woman that he killed, he's saying that he developed some prison program for men to help them and he's using her name for that program. He's despicable. And if you're a woman and you listen to this podcast, let me tell you this. Do not date jailbirds. Do not date thugs. Don't marry them. Don't have kids with them. Stay far away from them because your life expectancy would more than likely go down dealing with someone like that. Jamel was on drugs. He had guns. He's a thug. And Danielle thought that was a good person to spend her time with. That was a good person to have a baby with. And she was damn wrong because now she's dead and he's alive. He wants to get married now and have more kids and, and be happy. And what about Danielle? So just stay away from bad people. Trying to find someone with ambition, someone with a moral compass. That's who you should be in a relationship with. Forget about these thugs. Forget about these criminals. Another thing that upset me a lot is that Daniel's family forgave Jamel. And I don't understand that. And I know there are a lot of people that say you have to forgive someone in order to heal. For me, that's bullshit. If someone kills someone that I love, I will never forgive them unless they can bring that person back to life, then I can forgive them. If you murder someone and you can bring them back to life so I can have them again, now we can talk forgiveness. But if you cannot bring someone back to life, please don't ask for my forgiveness. Don't ask for it. Just go to prison, do your time, and that's it. I don't want to see you or talk to you for the rest of my life. That's my thoughts on that. Because forgiving somebody is not going to take the pain away. A lot of these cases that I have done on this channel, I don't know any of these victims. I've never met them, never met any of their family. I don't know them at all. And it hurts me, it pains me. 
And for these victims, I will not forgive their murderers. So if it's personal, if it's my family and somebody that I love, I most certainly will not be forgiving anybody. If you know someone who is in a domestic violence situation, tell them to call the domestic violence hotline or offer a safe place for them to stay. And tell your family and friends that they should stay away from low quality men. That's it for this video. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.